Welcome to our cytology laboratory at St Peter's Hospital. So we start off here with our specimen reception room and this area has 30 staff. We're open from 7 o'clock in the morning till 7 o'clock in the evening, Monday to Friday and have the capability to process about 3,000 specimens a day. So we start off with unwrapping every specimen, double checking it, make sure everything's okay. And if it passes the acceptance process, then we add a barcode label, and that's going to be the identifier for the specimen from this point forwards. After that, it goes off to data entry, where basically we are logging the test on our computer system known as WinPath Enterprise. And all the results are issued electronically from that system. So we uh, store the files in boxes and off they go to a trolley outside. So to the trolley outside the reception we have all the cardboard boxes of the vials stored here ready to go off to the laboratory. And the first thing we have to do is transfer the vials to these racks and they are the special ones to go on the first of our machines called the Tomcat. We just add these little extra tubes called uh, transfer tubes to the racks and the Tomcat is actually going to resuspend the cells in the vial and then transfer a small part of them to these tubes and they're the, the ones that go on for the actual HPV test. Uh, that happens on the, the next machine in the system called the Panther that you'll see in a moment. And just to note, so we have sent you links where you can see the operation of both these machines in greater detail. So there we are with the Tomcats. And then uh, this is the Panther. This is a rack of transfer tubes being loaded onto the Panther to do the HPV test. About 12% of those are positive. So we do cytology triage on those and make slides. So here they are, they've moved on to another machine called the T5000 that does that for us and in a moment you'll see the slides come out the other end and yeah as you can see they're virtually colourless at this stage so we now need to add some colour so we can look at them down the microscope and examine the cells. That happens on our staining machine. This is a fully robotic machine we just load the unstained slides in here and we get stained ones out the other end. This is the inside of it with all of the racks of uh, staining solutions and solvents that we use. Initially we stain the nuclei so we can look at those to check for dyscariosis and then we stain the rest of the cell that we call the cytoplasm because it's based on cell maturity with the abnormal nuclei that we can grade the dyscariosis. And here's a quick summary of the staining procedure. Once we've done all of that, we're finished with the vials for a while, so they go off to our archive room. They're stored in there numerically, just in case we do have to get them out again to make an, or to repeat the test, you know, which does happen from time to time. Once the actual final test result is issued, we check these are all finished with, and then they're disposed of, and that's the end of the process for them. has quite a large capacity and we have to store all of our work for a little while. Okay, so off to the screening room in another part of the department. We have 20 workstations in this area, all set up with ergonomic microscopes, as this is where our staff actually examine the slides and look for abnormal cells. And about 50% of them, you know, we actually find something at this stage in the process. After that process is completed, the slides go off to the SLARD archive because under screening program rules we do need to retain all of them for 10 years. And of course uh, they may well be reviewed again. We have the uh, multidisciplinary team process where you know, some patients are discussed by all the professionals getting together, deciding on how to carry forward their treatment and what to do next. And you know, all of these processes can be reviewed at any time during the archive period.